Hey, if you're interested in doing some really beautiful, dramatic night lapse photography, we got a couple of tips for you. Hi folks, Jim Baugh here at Jim Baugh Outdoors TV, standing right here on a very, very windy, windy afternoon on the Chesapeake Bay. Hey, we're going to talk about a couple of techniques that we do when we're filming our night lapse photography. Now, first thing we will talk about is power. When we film all night long, we're talking about basically 12 to 13 hours that we need to have power for, for our cameras. So the, our first setup involved basically power. This is, I believe, a 5,000 milliamp. This is a JBL speaker, also works very good. We use this in the field. And uh, basically your standard housing for your action camera where we have drilled a hole in the side so that we can uh, connect the power to the battery. And this would pretty much run all night long. And we'd get some good, uh, good shots with this, some good night laps. Uh, but it was a little clumsy and it was waterproof, but we wanted something in an all-in-one unit. So what we did, we went, did a little research online and found this battery. It's a Brunton, uh, it's a Brunton 2, and it's a completely waterproof battery. It's also got a USB <coughs> uh, connector to it, which is wonderful. It's got its own separate on and off switch, and it attaches right to our action camera housing. And this is excellent because the whole unit is waterproof. And when you're doing photography overnight, over like a 12, 13 hour time span, you know, you can have different weather patterns moving in and out and you really need something that's going to be waterproof. So there's a lot of cameras on the market. Actually, most do, even your smartphones phones will allow you to do um, time-lapse photography. And you just wanna make sure that you do waterproof your camera unit, very important. Because those are some of the best shots when you've got everything set up and then here comes the thunderstorm moving through the scene uh, and you get it. You do want to have something totally self-contained and uh, waterproof. Now the settings for the cameras will vary depending on what kind of camera you have and the best way to find out what type of noise you're going to have because the higher the ISO setting the higher noise you're going to get. Uh, some cam cameras have ca noise cancellation systems on them and that's fine but the easiest thing to do is simply put a lens cap on your camera and record a little video then take it into your studio or your computer, and then uh, just see the whatever white specs that you have uh, in the scene. Then you can still frame it, put it into your art program, and then basically reverse out, uh, use, basically create an image mask, and then lay that over your uh, night lapse. And that, that does work very well. A couple other tips when you're doing your night lapse is one, you want to use something to basically, well, that you can put on your lens cover uh, so that no moisture, raindrops, anything will uh, stick to it because it is going to be outside for quite a long period of time. And the other thing that we like to do because of bugs, especially here during the summer on the shore, you one, one fly landing on your camera housing and uh, you've just ruined your shot that you've uh, just spent all night to try to get. So uh, what we do is we take some DEET and uh, whatever bug pellet you want to use and we just spray it heavily on a, on a sock or rag and then we just lay it right over top on our tripod or whatever we're using. Uh, we use a Gorilla Grip a lot of times when we're working around docks and no flies, no insects at all will be landing on your camera housing and that's very important. So the time lapses that we do with really really bright full moon shots we have an ISO uh, pretty much limited at around 200 and then break down our um, exposure down to about well, it's about a 10 second exposure as opposed to a 20 second exposure that we would do on a, like a new moon, a very, very dark night. But you really need to experiment with your own camera and find your best settings. It, it won't take very long to do it all. So you want to make sure that for your camera application, you have enough power to get you going for at least 12, 13 hours and you never move the camera. So once you set up, you're good to go. Now, when you're finding locations for especially for like sunrises, you can't set your camera up well, like if it rises at 7 o'clock, you can't set it up at, you know, 7 o'clock. In order to get that light from the horizon coming up for the sunset, well, we usually would set up around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, get our overnight uh, cameras set up, and then turn them on, fire everything on, and we use GPS, many different applications for GPS, moon phases, sun positionings for rise and sunset, so we know exactly where to set up the camera to get the optimum sunset of exactly where we want it. Because, well, once you start the camera rolling, you can't move it. So it's very important to use some sort of mapping devices or mapping applications that 
that you can tell exactly where the position is going to be before you set up the camera. Hey, we're going to leave you with the Solstice Moon film that we did. Uh, that was shot over a 28-day period. Every day we were filming. It was incredible. We shot this about two years ago. We had some 56,000 photos that we actually took during this period and over 500 hours of actually running the, the camera. It really was quite a project. All edited down to only about a little over two minutes. So we're going to go ahead and show that to you right now.